My wife, Glenda, and uh, myself we had a good six years of sailing around the Pacific. Ninety-six, nine, we I couldn't plot me charts, and I so I blame my wife, of course, because she was off course, and uh, and then I realised that I needed my glasses redoing. Macular dystrophy is what I had, not macular degeneration where old people get it. You can get this at a young age. So I had my motorbike, truck, every license you can think of. I had all my tickets for sailing. I started losing my eyes quickly, you know, within the first 12 months they went right down and uh, then it was just shadows. And I cried out to the Lord, you know, Lord, I was doing your work. I was having fun sailing, really. And then the Lord sort of, I got a little bit sick and I thought, well, maybe that way I'll listen. He put me on flat on my back. And I gave up bargaining with God, threatening God, and realised, just thanking him, because he died for me on that cross. We sold the boat, moved into a, a unit, um, and we got from there, um, we moved back down to Victoria, and I said, well, I'll go to a church in Painesville. We shifted down to Painesville. I couldn't get work, I couldn't do anything. And I decided to help the disabled and the blind with sailability and, and other things and in my yachting. And, um, and I started competing in the blind sailing. And I started winning. Um, I put everything into it like I usually do. I won Disabled Sailor of the Year four times in the Australian and four, three times in Victorian. I, I won the World Blind Championships four times and that's through beeping boys. You know, the boys are beeping, so you've got to listen to a lot. And uh, I happened to to win each one. Um, and that was great. And everyone knew me as a blind sailor. So the night I heard about this John Malor, or I used to call him John Mallow, and he picks me up on it. But anyhow, he, uh, I heard that he was an Australian, not an American. And I thought, well, this will be interesting. You know, he's preach with the Koori people and uh, he's come from up north so he must be a, a bit of a roust about and the whole church decided to go down from Painesville and uh, went down there and I thought well, how many times am I going to, because I have, I've gone, I've prayed for myself, I've prayed, got pastors to pray for me, I had people everywhere I went pray for my eyes and nothing happened. And I thought, oh, I must have something bad inside me or I must have done some big sin. When John called uh, people up, or oh, I was rehearsing actually, this is a man of faith for you. When this bloke puts his hand on me and prays and then he takes him away and nothing happens, I'll say, well, glory to God, it mustn't be God's timing. And I had some fancy speech wrapped up, you know. And then it just sort of this warm feeling come over me before I even went up there and I, I got a bit frightened. Well, I go up there, won't I? And I asked the pastor, I said to him, I says, what's happening? I says, I'm a little bit hesitant. And uh, yeah, he says, you're probably a bit scared. I says, yeah. He says, but what are you scared of? He says, are you scared of not getting healed? He says, oh, are you scared of getting healed? And I thought, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, and I thought about it for a second. I said, no, I want my eyes back, you know, I'm not worried about not getting here because there is some people I really found and I believe that they don't want to get healed. They don't want to lose their comfort, their hero, their on the soapbox, their trophies or their pensions or their people feeling sorry for them. And I didn't want any of that. I wanted my eyes back, you know, and at this stage I had eight great eight grandkids and I know it, haven't seen one of them, you know, since I lost my eyes. He, he came over and he took my glasses off and because uh, I couldn't stand bright light and my eyes, this one was turned to the right, this one used to turn up and they used to blink a lot. So anyhow, he's he praying away, he prayed once and twice and then he, he prayed again, you know, and I opened my eyes and and behold, I saw his red shirt and I even saw the stripes, you know, and I said, you're wearing a red shirt. He says, oh, you can see that. He said, you can see that. And I says, no, and he prayed some more and, you know, I could see the shadows of his face. I couldn't make out his face. I really couldn't believe that I could see colour and I could see shadows again. 
And by the time he's finished praying with me, you know, he prayed again and again. And I, I was ready to go home. He says, right. And he went off to pray with someone else. And he come back. He says, no. He says, we're not finished yet. You have to be persistent in the Lord. No, don't just settle for that. So I want to be like Oliver Twist. I want more. And then I was so greedy that I went back the second night and third night. The time we finished that night, I could see the first two rows. And it was so spooky because people were walking out of a black mist and at three feet away, they were appearing in a shadow. And it was scaring the daylights out of me. Next night when I went back, he prayed for me again and we prayed and prayed and, you know, and I stood in one place at the church and I was picking things to see what I can't see and then if I, could, if I improve, I knew I've, I've improved. Wow, you know, I could see about six rows back and, and then I wanted a Bible so I'd see if I could read it, but I couldn't read it quite yet. It was too small, and uh, but I could read the big letters on the wall and, and of course, there was about... 35 rows right to the back and uh, I couldn't see that far and then Sunday a lot of people came because the news just went round like wildfire you know because everyone knew that I was blind and um, and that I could see again and so people come to have a look what's going on and as I said to them John didn't heal me you know, and they said oh you, aren't you lucky he healed you you know well, luck had nothing to do with it, it was, Jesus already paid the price and John couldn't heal a flea on a dog's back, you know. It's only through John that Jesus healed me using John. But when I went home Friday night and told my wife, you know, I rang her up from there and I said to her, I says, I could see, I could see colour and everything else. And she said, oh, go on. She says, the doctor says it's incurable. And when I went home, we were both crying. And, and then she stopped crying and she goes, oh, and she got all sad. So what's wrong? She says, no, you could see all my wrinkles. See, it's been 12 years. <laughs> and I said, don't be silly. You know, and I thought, oh. I went in the mirror and I looked at myself. I went, whoa, where was young Paul gone? The last night, I actually saw people in the last row in the red jumper, you know, and waved to them and, um, and the clock on the wall. When I put my hand up to my eye and closed off all the other light, I says, wait a minute, the second hand's coming around to the 30, the 35, the 40. They said, that's exactly right. I went to one specialist um, and I says, I want you to examine my eyes. They put a dye in, then they x-ray your eyes and it was like all crust. You can see a sparkle of things over your eye and it was dead. And you know what he said to me? He says, you're totally blind. I says, yeah, I could see you. He said, no, you can't. He says, you are totally blind. He says, all the crusts are still there. You can't possibly see. I said, well, doesn't that make it a bigger miracle? You know, he says, yeah, but I can't write miracle of God on the paper. You know, I says, yeah, why? He says, I'm a man of science. I said, well, I'm a man of God. I says, I'd rather believe what I could see than believe in what you think, you know. And, um, and he says, well, I can't answer that one for you. Today, I'm still legally blind, yeah, and people can't get their head around that, that I'm still visually impaired, um, but I'm a, I'm a B3, B4. I could walk without a dog, I could walk without a cane, I could see everything, but sometimes that, when it gets dark, my eyes, I, I need... I can't see as good, but I'm looking forward to um, getting my licence back and everything else. But I've been so grateful. I got to see my grandkids. I sit there and I tell my wife, you know, you could see yourself and say, why didn't God give you your full eyes so and get your licence back? And I says, I would end up getting my boat back. And then I would have said, Lord, I'm going out on the Pacific and I'll preach on the islands for you and everything else. See you later. And, and then, I don't know. I'll ask him when I get there. But I know, and I tell people now, that this is only the second best miracle in my life. The first miracle in my life has been when I accepted, when I invited Jesus Christ into my life and become a born-again Christian. 
I'm disqualified now for going into the in the blind in the B1 blind sailing, but that's nothing. I'll just go out in the able bods now and, and win some races there. And if I don't win, at least I'll see the bloke who beats me. And I just thank God for that.